What's up, baseball fans? Welcome to the channel. So today I'm going to talk about the top five pitchers of all time that should have won an MVP award. Before I get started, if you are new here today, feel free to subscribe down below. Don't forget to hit the little bell and don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like today's video. If not, leave a thumbs down and don't forget to leave a comment at the end. All right, so let's get into it. Number five on my list, I have Steve Carlton in 1972. Here's a season you don't really ever hear of, but Steve Carlton's 1972 season was crazy. He won 27 games, had an ERA below two, a whip below one, an NL leading 346 innings pitched, and a major league leading 30 complete games in 41 starts. Steve Carlton, unfortunately, was on a really bad Phillies team that only won 59 games. However, this guy won almost half of their games. He had a league-leading 12.2 wins above replacement, which was almost four points higher than the NL MVP winner Johnny Bench, who had a war of 8.6. In the end, being on a terrible team definitely hurt his chances, but there's definitely an argument to be made that he should have won the NL MVP that year. Coming in at number four on my list, I have Randy Johnson in 1995. Here's a season you also don't hear of very much. He was nails in 1995. He won 18 games and only lost twice. He led the majors in strikeouts with 294 and had a strikeout per nine rate of 12.3. He led the AL in whip with a 1.04, hits per nine with 6.6, .6, and home runs per nine with 0.5. A lot of people say Albert Bell should have won the AL MVP in 1995 because he basically had a better season than the winner Mo Vaughn in basically every category. However, Vaughn got a lot more votes due to his great character, while Albert Bell had a lot of issues with the media and was coming off a corked bat incident in 1994. However, when you look at Randy Johnson's wins above replacement in 1995, it was better than both Vaughn's and Bell's. He was indispensable to the Mariners in 1995 in a season in which the Mariners were close to leaving Seattle and baseball was revitalized. Coming in at number three on my list, I have Pedro Martinez in 2000. Pedro's 2000 season was absolutely insane and was arguably one of the best pitching seasons of all time. 18 wins, an ERA of 1.74 that led the majors, a whip of 0.73 that led the majors, and the best ERA plus we have ever seen of 291, if you don't count Tim Keefe's 293 ERA plus in the year 1880. I understand, the Red Sox didn't make the playoffs this year, but Pedro's 2000 season was historic. The eventual AL MVP Jason Giambi hit 333, 43 homers, and 137 RBIs, but Pedro had a wins above replacement of 11.7 compared to Jason Giambi's 7.8. If you did want to give the 2000 MVP to a hitter that was on a team that made the playoffs, why did Alex Rodriguez win it? He had a comparable season to Jason Giambi, a wins above replacement of 10.3, which was almost three points higher than Jason Giambi's. He was great in the field, and he helped the Mariners win the wild card. But Pedro had a better war than A-Rod. In the end, though, Pedro did win a Cy Young, but it's an absolute shame he didn't win the MVP that year. Coming in at number two, I have another picture in 1995 that should have won the MVP, Greg Maddox. This is a season I don't think gets talked about enough. Greg Maddox was absolutely insane in 1995. 19 wins and only two losses. An MLB leading 1.63 ERA, a major league leading 0.81 whip, and a major league leading 10 complete games, and also a 260 ERA plus that also led the majors. When I look at his wins above replacement of 9.6 and compare it to the 1995 NL MVP's Barry Larkin's war of 5.9, I just scratched my head. Sure, Larkin had a great year, but Maddox was clearly the better player in 1995, and he was a huge reason the Braves won the World Series that year. And coming in at number one on my list, I have Pedro Martinez in 1999. In my opinion, this was the biggest mistake the voters ever made in the MVP voting. Earlier, I was raving about how good Pedro was in the year 2000, but his 1999 season, in my opinion, was better. 
There has been a debate for a long time on which one of these seasons was better for Pedro, 1999 or 2000. In my opinion, 1999 was better simply due to the fact that he had a worse defense behind him in 1999 compared to 2000. In 99, the Red Sox ranked 12th out of 14 in fielding in the American League, while in 2000, they ranked 7th out of 14 in the American League. To prove this further, let's go a little deeper. In 1999, Pedro's BABIP, or batting average on balls in play, was 323, while in 2000, it was 236. To me, this means that the defense in 99 let a lot of outs turn into hits compared to the defense in 2000. Let's look a little further at Pedro's FIP, or Fielder Independent Pitching on an ERA scale, which accounts for events a pitcher can control such as strikeouts, walks, and home runs allowed. In 1999, his FIP was a 1.39, while in 2000, it was almost a full run higher at 2.17. To me, this shows that when you account for the things that he could control, he was better in 1999. Either way, both seasons are amazing. It's like picking whether or not you want chocolate or vanilla that day. You can go either way, but for me, it was 1999 where he truly flourished. So let's talk about that 1999 season. An ERA a hair above two that led Major League Baseball, 313 strikeouts in 213 innings pitched that ranked second in Major League Baseball, 13 Ks per nine that led Major League Baseball, a whip of 0.92 that also led the majors. Pedro this year was basically unhittable. If you take Pedro and his 9.8 wins above replacement off the 1999 Red Sox, they don't make the playoffs that year. But if you take Yvonne Rodriguez and his wins above replacement of 6.4, the Rangers would still make the playoffs. Don't get me wrong, Yvonne Rodriguez had an awesome season, but Pedro was just so much better that year, not just according to the eye test, but on the stat sheet as well. This absolutely should have been Pedro's award. So that's my list. Tell me, who are the pitchers that you think should have won an MVP award? That's all I got for today. Thanks for joining. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.